Hey guys, it's MJ, the student at Tree, and we're going to be looking at the two-state Markov model. This is chapter 4 for subject CT4. And hopefully we have enough time to get through all six of these topics, uh, transitional diagrams, probabilities, assumptions, the Kolmogorov forward differential equation, the likelihood function for mu, and the maximum likelihood estimator for mu. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, transitional diagrams. These things are visual representations of the Markov models. And they're very simple. Um, you have your state that you write uh, here. And you have the border, it can be a square or a circle. And then you have an arrow that indicates um, the transition. And the arrow is, the weight of that arrow is the force um, so the greater that number is the more likely things are going to go from this state into that state so what we have here is very simple I can be alive um, or I can be dead and there is a force that is pushing me from being alive to dead and that is known as the force of mortality and what we've got over here or what this formula yeah, I think we all understand what the force of mortality is. Um, but what this yellow formula over here is showing, oh, let's get it here. It's saying that it is the, the probability of, now we know that Qx is the probability of someone dying. So it's the probability of someone dying over a very, 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 very small interval. And we're going to see later how this is the, that whole derivatives and this is why mathematics is important for actuarial science as you're going to be needing it to derive these results. But this will all become simpler um, once we just you know, recap on probabilities. Essentially, there are two types of probabilities within um, Markov models. You have the transitional probability. This is the probability that um, I'm in one state and I move into another state. So in our example, uh, TQX, um, this represents that if I'm alive at time X, um, oh sorry, so transitional probability says that this is the probability that I'm dead at times X plus T given that I was alive at time X. So transitional probability, I'm leaving that state to go to another state. Or there is the probability that I don't die, that I stay alive, and this is known as occupancy probability, TPX. And this is the probability that I'm alive at x plus t, given that I was alive at x. Now, before we can move any further, um, we need to make some assumptions, okay, with regards to this whole mathematical theory, okay. With Markov models, we make the assumption that they have the Markov prop, you know, proper property, sorry, that they have the Markov property. And that is that the probabilities depend only on the current state. So it doesn't matter what your history is, everything, well, all information is contained in the present state. And so the past does not influence the present that pushes to the future. Okay. Um, then we have this assumption over here. And what this says is that the probability that I die um, in state, or that I'm dead, by time x plus t plus h, given that I'm alive at x plus t, is equal to the force of mortality at h x plus t times by this h. Okay, and now that's just that mathematical, you know, that's a function that goes straight to zero as h when you use h. But the, I th the thing is, is to remember here is that h is incredibly small. And again, this is where a background in mathematics does help as it becomes quite philosophical, you know, what is a small value of h. Anyway, we're not going to get into that too much. The final assumption that we're going to make is that the force of mortality or these forces are constant um, throughout the year. So u x plus t is a constant mu, okay, as long as t is between 0 and 1. And that's just to make the mathematics simpler. Um, and because, you know, the force does change ever so slightly in a year, we can get away with this assumption. But we are losing a little bit of accuracy. 
Okay, now we get onto this thing known as the Kolmogorov forward differential equation. And first time looking at this, it is difficult, it is intimidating, but let's have a look at it, okay? We have that the probability that I'm alive at age t plus h plus x, given that I'm alive at probability x, is equal to the probability that I'm alive at time x plus t, uh, given that I was at x, times the probability that I'm alive at time h plus x plus t, given that I was at probability x plus t. So what, what we're basically doing is we're splitting. So, and I guess an easy way to say is this, the probability that I'm alive in 10 years time is equal to the probability that I'm alive in five year time times the probability that five year older me is alive in a further five years time. So you can split probabilities like that. Then what we do is we use that assumption the mark of assumption, we break it up into, oh sorry, what we do is we just use the that relationship that, you know, 1 minus p is equal to q or 1 minus q is equal to p. Um, you know, if, if I'm not leaving, then I'm staying. Or if I'm not staying, then I'm leaving. So that's where, and you know, probability is equal to 1. So that's how we get that. Then we use assumption 2 to transform the probability into the force like we have there. We then rearrange this bit here, and you'll see that this takes on, this here from maths one is very similar to the derivative sign. So when we take the limit of h to zero, we get that the derivative of the occupancy probability is equal to the negative occupancy probability times by the force. Now, this, when you think about it, it, it makes sense, um, but you have to think about it. This, you're not going to get this straight away by watching this video. You know, you're not going to be like, oh wow, I understand it now. This is something you have to think about and you just have to wrestle with. By doing examples, um, numerical examples, it will become clearer. It does get a bit confusing when you're just using t plus h plus x and all that. Anyway, um, we continue with the Kolmogorov forward differential equation. Um, we can solve the equation using just the separation method. Um, you do some mathematics and you get this very important piece of information. Okay, um, We use the assumption, the third assumption, just to simplify it. Um, but this should be looking familiar from subject CT1 when we did the force of interest. You know, we had e to negative delta, you know, delta was the force of interest type of thing. So it shouldn't be brand new stuff to you guys, but it is difficult, but it is very important. Like the rest of the course builds upon this result. And I wish I could give a better explanation but it is difficult, and I did this last year, so I'm a little bit rusty. But anyway, that's very important. Um, and I just did some examples myself, and these are my old study notes. Then there's this whole likelihood function. And if you've done subject CT3, um, likelihood functions should come naturally to you. Um, if anyone is struggling with them, let me know, and I'll maybe make a CT3 video on the likelihood functions and then the maximum likelihood estimator you know you basically take the log differentiate set it the equation to zero and check the second derivative but they are very um, simple once you understand the, the concepts you know they're basically saying you count the amount of deaths divided by the amount of transitions to get the force of mortality type of thing um, so yeah I know I'm jumping very quickly through this but I don't want this video to be too long and this is very much subject CT3 work. What is cool, I'll leave it on a cool note, is, I mean, you can see here the question paper in subject, um, oh yeah, in 2012 for the subject, had a cool question about aliens, sacrifice, becoming dead, and then zombies. So the examiners do get quite creative with this work, but you can see how there is some fun. This is this is the fun part of actuarial science, is these Markov models. So yeah, I know um, multi maximum likelihood estimators. This is subject CT three, so you should be cool with it. 
Kolmogorov forward differential equations are something new, um, but you should get this feeling from CT1 when we did the force of interest. And yeah, learn your assumptions. Remember the probabilities. I mean, you're going to use that also a lot in subject CT5. And yeah, we're going to be seeing a lot more transitional diagrams. But yeah, that is chapter four, the two-state Markov model for subject CT4. Um, I'm MJ, the student actuary. Thank you for watching. Cheers.